All right, good afternoon and welcome to your first of many videos that you're going to watch this year um, in this chemistry class that are going to give you your notes and the background information you need to be able to participate in class and um, access the information that we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to start today into our chemical reactions unit, which is going to be unit three. We'll go ahead and get that ready for you. We're going to start off with our learning goal. Now, this is going to be the same learning goal that's referenced on your student progress track uh, tracking sheet. Okay, so we're going to continue to use that sheet. We want to see how we can use the information not only in the notes, but also on the activities that we're doing in class to make sure that the opportunities and the activities we're doing in class are, are making sense to you and preparing for your test. I'm sorry, I forgot about your learning goal itself. All right, learning goal is going to be I can use symbols to represent chemical reactions and the conditions under which they take place. Basically, I can look at a reaction and I can tell what are the different parts of it and how I'm going to go about using that information. The first thing that we've gone over is, and we've used this a little bit in classes, how we count atoms. If I'm giving you a chemical reaction, I have to know the different parts of it. What are the compounds? What are the elements? Whether I'm dealing with compounds or elements, which we talked a little bit about before, but also how to know how many of each I have on each side. So, the first rule we said is going to consist of either a capital letter or a capital letter and a lowercase letter. This is going to tell us that there's at least one there um, for our chemical symbols. And giving a couple of examples here. Now, because we've done this, I'm going to go through it fairly quickly. So, if you need to pause, rewind, go back to it so you can make sure you have it in your notes. Rule number two. Subscript goes with any number, or sorry, any element that it directly follows and indicates the number of atoms in that element are present. So we have H2 as our first example. That means we have two atoms of hydrogen or given to us in our second example of sulfuric acid H2SO4. We have two atoms of hydrogen with one atom of sulfur and four of oxygen based on our formula given to us. Now you may look at it and say well how do I know again with the sulfur why doesn't the the four apply to it? Remember it only goes with the one that it directly follows unless we're into this situation, which is our parentheses. Now, the elements in the parentheses go with the subscript that follows it. The number in, numbers inside the parentheses are then multiplied by the subscript outside. So, given the example like we used in class, um, magnesium phosphate, or Mg3PO42, tells us that we have three magnesium, but then I have to go ahead and multiply whatever's inside the parentheses, in this case, we have our magnesium here, sorry, our phosphate, PO4, is going to be multiplied by this 2. So 2 times the 1 will give us 2 atoms of phosphorus, and 2 times the 4 that we already had will give us 8 total oxygen. Similar reference for example number 2. Now, last but not least, when we're dealing with this, we have to then look at what happens if we have a coefficient. Now, coefficient, again, is going to be that number out front that's going to let us know exactly how many of the molecule we have. So right over there. All right. Sorry, I have a little computer moment. Now, if I'm looking at the coefficient, even for this simple com uh, compound of zinc chloride, ZnCO2, all I'm going to do is multiply the entire compound by 2. So... Think of it like we said before, if I have distributive property, I have 2 times x plus 1. How I would normally solve this is I'd multiply 2 times x and then multiply 2 times 1, giving me 2x plus 2. I'm going to do a similar thing here. I'm going to multiply the entire thing by 2. So if I had one atom of zinc, I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 2. I now have two atoms of zinc, two atoms of chlorine. Now I'm going to have four. And second is referenced by the example we have here. Now, how do we actually represent a chemical reaction? When we look at a chemical reaction, the big thing that we always want to look at is the fact that it's basically just a recipe. It's looking at, okay, if I take, like for a cake, if I take eggs and butter and flour and sugar and vanilla and all these different things and mix them together and bake them, I should get a cake. With this, the only thing I'm missing is how, are, how am I going to actually measure this? Because I can go into the kitchen, and then when I go into the kitchen, I start mixing things together and come out with something that doesn't look or taste like a cake. So what's missing from the situation? 
and that's going to be what we call our coefficients. So let's take a look at what we have here. Different parts of the reaction are, first I have what are called reactants. These are going to be the chemical species, the compounds, to the left of the arrow, always to the left of the arrow. Now, for the product side, that's everything on the right side of the arrow. So whether it's one compound or four compounds, those are all going to be the products. The reactants, again, will be to the left side of the arrow. Now, if I have the arrow itself, it actually means yields or produces. So when I read the, the equation, it's almost like I'm reading the sentence. The reactants yield or produce a product. Makes perfect sense. Now, what are the other parts I have to pay attention to? It's going to be the coefficients, which are, again, the large numbers out front. And you see everything is labeled nice and clearly for you. And you see this, you should see this in your notes. And the last part, which are going to be the subscripts that are going to be written in the compound to indicate how many atoms are present. And you notice that those, again, are at the bottom and to the right of the element that it represents, just like we dealt with before when we were counting atoms. So what does this look like overall? If I have an actual chemical equation, like I have iron plus oxygen produces iron oxide, or what we commonly call rust. As I'm looking at this, I see all the different parts put together, and it shows me what it's going to make. Now, how do I figure out how much of each I'm going to need? Oops, went ahead, jumped ahead a little bit. We'll go back to that in a second. Now, what are the symbols used in the equation? Some of which we've already talked about, but some of them are going to be brand new. The plus symbol just lets you know it separates the reactants or products or however many you have. Just put a plus sign between them. The arrow, we've seen this before. This is the yield symbol. It's, it's, it's sort of like the equal sign of a chemical equation. Now, the other symbols that you're going to see here, you notice we have the S, L, G. These are going to tell us what state of matter it's, it is. So if you see S, it means a solid. If you see L, it means liquid. Gas, mean, or G, means gas. The next one that we run into, which is a little bit different, is this AQ. It means aqueous, or it just means that it's dissolved in water. Sorry for my horrible penmanship. There we go. So you want to keep that in mind. Now, the other two symbols that we now have are we have a looks like a triangle sitting over the arrow. So that's still the yield symbol arrow, but we have this triangle that lets us know that there's heat being added into the uh, to the reaction. And the last but not least. If we see PT or any of these things, uh, elements or compounds written over the arrow, it just means that it's being used as a catalyst. We're going to do a lot more with this throughout the year and even throughout this unit, so don't worry. It's going to come back. So now, that's where we're going to wrap up Section 1. Take a few moments, review your notes. If you have any questions, write them down. So when we come into class, we can go ahead and get them answered as we move into the next part. Have a great evening, and I look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow.